perspective about what you're doing is what determines your approach. You're a teller, you're a carpenter, you're a pastor, whatever, a bricklayer. How you see what you're doing will determine the way people will see it. You see, people like the white collar job. What do you want to be? I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a medical doctor. I want to be this. I want to be that. Those jobs that everybody claims to be what they want to be or become or do in life, it is because of the attraction those jobs have. Are you hearing my voice here right now? The attraction. A lawyer is well dressed, has a gown, has a wig. A medical doctor has a dress code also. And all that. So when children see them, they are like, I want to be this person. Are you understand what I'm saying here right now? And they all have to do with the way you are doing it. The other day, I saw a young man, a, you know, a transporter, a kekena pep guy, on suit. I saw him on suit. And that was good. That was good. <laughs> now hear this. This will touch you. If what you are doing lacks attraction, you are failed in it. If what you are doing does not command attraction, you are failed in it. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You're into hospitality. You are into, you know, restaurant, hotel, whatever. You do it in a way that the person around you desires to do it. Wist ye not that I should be about my father's business. I don't know. Are you, are you catching something here right now? I've been privileged in my little days in ministry to have people enter into ministry full time just because they saw me preach. They just saw me preach. <laughs> but two or three places. No, 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 no. I like that guy. I like the way he's, he's pastoring. He's like this. I want to be a pastor. And everybody thinks it's a joke. The guy gets into the Bible school, theological school, graduates, become a pastor. Because what I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing it in a way that commands what? Attraction. How can you be a teller? When we ask you, you give the baptism name that you are into fashion and you are not fashionable. You don't look it. I took a lady to go measure her excellency. Just measure her clothes. Would like to gift her with. Just as the lady came to measure her, the, her excellency said, I like this one you're wearing. Can I have this one? And that was not what I had in mind to make for her. I only wanted to make one clothes for her. Because of time, they just have two days or a day to go, which is tomorrow. I took the lady there yesterday. I like this. And before we knew it, we are now making two. The one I had in mind and the one she liked. Now she is into fashion. And it was seen on her. Is anybody understand what I'm saying here right now? It is your perspective. This is, I'm, I want to say this emphatically. It is your perspective about what you're doing that it means your approach to it. Your approach. And listen, the best approach to anything that will succeed is a business approach. The best approach to anything you are doing if it must work, 
is a business approach. Just like Jesus said. We still know that I should be about my father's business. We still know. Success is never an accident. No, sir. It is never an accident. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> the best approach is what? A business approach. To anything you are doing. If it must work. If it must succeed. There are pastors who are not doing well because they have not given ministry a business approach. That's why they are not succeeding. There are people into restaurant, into hotel, into hospitality. They are not doing anything serious because of their approach. And you see, the truth is that it is the way you approach it that others will do what? Approach it. So first, what is business? Business is any activity that generates profit. Based on the ethics, principles, and conduct toward it. Hallelujah. Based on what? The ethics, principles, and conduct towards it. Privileged as a pastor, we always have people come to us, pray for me, my business is not going forward, my money is always going down. You hear funny languages like um, for those of us who hear Igbo, Igbo Nabarim Naka and all that. Those things are funny. Very funny. Yes, in our mind, it's about profit. But we forget the other side that there must be ethics, principles, and conduct toward it that will bring the profit. You don't do business anyhow. There must be a how to. Is anybody hearing my voice here right now? There must be a how to to it. The labor of the foolish wearied them all because he knoweth not how to go to the city. There is a how to. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse number 15. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them. Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. There is a how to. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a how to. So whatever you are doing that you've not taken your time to ask how to do it. And achieve the purpose of what you are doing. Then. You're not in business. You have failed in it already. There's a how-to. When I started ministry in 1998, 
privileged by the grace of God. The Lord spoke to me clearly. He said, after one year of intensive outreach, start the church. So throughout 98, we're busy with outreaches. Organizing meetings, going from place to place, reaching out to people. 1999, we kicked off the church. But before we kicked off, I went to my mentor then. And I said to him, we're about to start the church. Look at what God said to me. How do we start the church? It's an experience and we never forget. And the man just said to me, start anyhow. Start anyhow. And people of God, that church we started anyhow is still trying to survive. Because we started anyhow. Please, anyhow is no how. <laughs> there is a how to. <laughs> the level of the foolish, we read every one of them. It was in my office the other day, I rebuked three pastors. Three pastors that came to see me. He said, your church is not great. They say, yes. <laughs> Who counts church money? He said, the wife. He said, there's a problem. My wife has never counted church money. Has never been to where they are counting it. For what? Who sent you? I don't know. Am I talking to somebody here right now? That is a how to. Whatever that is not working is not about the devil. It's about the knowledge of how to do it. Because you see, unbelievers don't pray. Like we pray and yet they make it. Am I making a point here right now? All they have is the how to. That's why we are gathered. That's why we are gathered. I'm not doing the business teaching. I'm only giving you a charge to know why you are here. Hello? Because me too, I want to learn. Somebody's in business. You are the CEO. And you are the cashier and the accountant. Only you. <laughs> there is no difference between profit And uh, uh, the, the corporate profit account and your own private account. Some people carry their capital in their pocket. And you still want business to go forward? It can't go forward. From the day one of this church, we've always had a treasurer. I've never handled money. Now, listen, the problem why people are, so, are, are struggling is because there are certain things they know as principles or ethics of what they are doing, but they think that they can only apply it when they are big. No. If you don't start it from the beginning, you never grow big. Am I talking to anybody here right now? From the beginning. By the grace of God, we have a school, a growing school, Nursery Primary School that is, you know, coming up. Can you believe this? Till today, the checkbook is not with me. From the beginning of that school, the checkbook is not with me. That when you just like, you sign. When you just like, you use the ATM, withdraw money, and eat a bacha. It's, it's. So when, every time there is a business meeting, they call for a business meeting. That's one of my most exciting times. Like when I travel out and then maybe we went for a program and they said there's a business session. That was where I met Dr. Miles Muro in Israel. We went for a conference, a prayer conference in Israel. And suddenly they said, there's going to be a morning session. 
and you pay $30 to participate. I was very fast to pay. And then, right in the class, we we're waiting for the lecturer. The man that walked in was Dr. Mice Moreau. I still have my certificate of that uh, session. That's where you know you have the knowledge of how to. Somebody say how to. Uh, the truth is, if you don't know how to, you're not going anywhere. Guess work is a risk. Guess work is no work. Let's just try it like that and see if it's it to work. No, 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 no. There's nothing like let's try it like that. No. <laughs> is it not humbling? Yesterday, even when I got home, I, I was I re-emphasized it to my wife. A man said he's consulted. They consult him with hundred thousand dollars for one hour. If not, it makes meaning to you. That one should make meaning. Are you hearing what I'm saying here right now? A hundred thousand dollars. For the first time in my life, he's the man that rebuked me in Ghana. He rebuked me. There was something I said. He rebuked me. He said, I don't like religious people. I don't like religious people. <laughs> Stop trying to spiritualize everything. Other things just need facts. Praise God. Oh, we're coming from a... Okay, that's going to be the next one. I'll put it to you. When we're coming from the airport in Lagos. We kept discussing, discussing, discussing at the waiting hall. And suddenly, I was taking, getting calls from the protocol and all that, so in the bid to handle it, I took permission and stepped out to take all the calls. So my wife also stepped out to take calls from those fixing their, their food. Immediately, Her Excellency took her computer and started doing something. He himself, suddenly we couldn't find him again. We were looking for him. When finally he appeared, I said, where have you been? He said he went to get books. I said, if it is books, I'll go with you. So we now went. He has picked some books. And he said, is there anyone I like? I said, let me just take a look. Took a look. I got one. I, said, I like this one. So he said, that book I took. He brought out his phone. Snapped it. Because he said they should give him a copy of that book. And it's the last one. That's when he turned and said to me, so you too, you like books. I said, why not? And then he said, do I know that he has 50,000 books in his library? How many thousand? Okay. Fifty thousand books plus the Holy Ghost. We, we have only Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's what some of us can go for. 50,000 books. And immediately we got the books and sat down. From the books that he picked, he distributed books. You take, read. You take, read. You take, read. Even when we entered the plane, he still brought out the book, gave her, said, you take, read. And finally yesterday, he gifted you that book. She wanted to return it. He said, you take, take it. I now remember, this is the second man I ever met that dragged me to a book shop. The first one was David E. Biome. Second one is Charles Ndefon. You cannot be bigger than your knowledge. And that's the next thing I want to talk about. You cannot be bigger than the knowledge you have. In Proverbs, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Chapter 1 and verse 5. 
Proverbs 1 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. My emphasis will be within the A part of that scripture. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Wise men don't stop learning. Wise men don't stop learning. The wise man will hear and will increase learning. There are some people that immediately after school, they've never finished one book. Since you graduated, you've never finished one. One of the books that really fired me up is not even a Christian book. Not a Christian. Like the one I picked at that bookstore, non-Christian. Not a Christian book. Going through the contents alone was when I was about to pick. When I opened the book, I looked, checked the contents, opened the book, checked the contents. When I saw the contents of this one, I said, wow. So he now said to me, oh, you look at the contents first? I said, yes. Okay. So let me see the contents. Looked at it. Wow. I need a copy. He said, that's the last one. I had to take his phone, snap it, to look for it. Somebody said, when you stop learning, you start dying. When you stop learning, you start dying. Learning updates you in your venture, in your career, in your vocation. Learning updates you. Keeps you in the now. <laughs> Keeps you in the now. I'm not a medical doctor, but because I have a little grace on the healing area. We got to know some things. Before, when you're operated on, they have to use whatever to stitch you. True or false? True or false? Yeah, but now, uh, there's something, I don't know whether it's like a gum or something. I don't know what you call it. Okay. Okay. But what do you call it generally? Okay. So we have non-absorbable stitches and absorbable. I'm learning. Praise God. Some people, nobody tries to use anything on them and it's just there. You just And it's, it's done. No pain. You can't see anything. But you, 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 you wouldn't believe that some people are still carrying those ones that... Are you understanding to teach you. To teach you. Three enemies of learning. A wise man will hear and will increase. Somebody say increase. Come alive. Say increase. Increase it. Increase it. Increase it. And will increase. Number one is pride. Pride. How to know a proud person? Very simple. Anybody that when you are talking, you want to tell the person something, you have not finished the person, I know it already, I know. That's a proud person. The reason why they are telling you what you know again is that it is possible you know it but you don't understand it. Are you hearing me somebody right now? That man called the Ethiopian eunuch 
was busy reading the book of Isaiah 53. He was reading it. And somebody came to him. The person didn't ask him, do you know what is written in that scripture? Mm -mm. The person asked him, understandest thou what thou readest? Because the truth is that if you understand it, it will show. Praise God somebody. If you understand it, it will show. If you understand it, it will show. It will show. Just like at the airport, within a few minutes, he was already telling us, look at how to multiply your church. Make your church to be in every nook and cranny of the city. The man of God. This is what to do. That in every part of the city, a branch of your church will be there. We know that church should spread. We've read some things. But in the simplicity. But I said, okay, just doing this, church will spread. Good. Help me tell somebody, if you know it, show it. So pride remains your greatest enemy in the school of knowledge. Pride. In Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I pray for someone today. No more stress. Amen. No more struggle. Amen. Enter your rest season. In the name of Jesus. Come unto me, all you the labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Then the next verse. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. We don't see that one. We only see and pray. Take my yoke upon me and pray. That's what we see. But he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So there are yokes that only learning can remove. Prayer can handle them. And see the key to learning. Verse 29. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. So it takes meekness. It takes what? Meekness. It takes humility to learn. And now please hear this. Humility is simply accepting you don't know. Humility is what? Simply accepting I don't know. Or I don't know enough. So you go for it. Go for it. To get more. Number two enemy. Is lack of application. That is what we call wisdom. Hallelujah. What is wisdom? The right application of knowledge. Why did we say or why did we define or why are we defining wisdom as the right application of knowledge? It's because of the explanation that Jesus gave to it. Matthew 7. From verse number 27. Let's do it from verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine. And do with them. Shall be likened unto a foolish man. Which built his house upon the sand. The next one. 
And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell. And grace was the fall of it. There is nothing you are doing now that will fall. And then you see the next one. The next verse. And it came to pass when Jesus had, no, 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 no. Okay, you're back to 24. Thank you. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Verse 25. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon it. Nothing you are doing will fall. Amen. So, the proof that you know is that you applied. You applied it. That man that uh, Philip asked, understand it, thou what thou readest? When the man understood, the next thing the man did was, excuse me, sea water. Can I be baptized now? So the proof of understanding is action. Is action. Application. 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 And hear me? You can't claim to be learned if you don't apply what you know. So we are here today to receive information and to receive grace to apply. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come alive in the name of Jesus Christ. Come alive in the name of Jesus Christ. And number three. Enemy of knowledge. No desire for improvement. No desire for improvement. Somebody said that the largest room in the world is the room of improvement. When you don't want to improve, you don't desire to improve in what you're doing, you just get stuck. A man asked Jesus, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. And the man looked at Jesus and said to him, all these have I kept from my youth. And I like the man. He now asks, what lack I yet? What lack I yet? Means I still want to improve. I want to do more. Glory to God. I believe that the you that I see in 2022 will not be the you we will see in 2023. Because there's going to be an improvement. I said there will be an improvement. I said there will be an improvement. In your job, there will be an improvement. In your business, there will be an improvement. In your lifestyle, there shall be an improvement. If you receive that word right now, give the Lord a big hand right now.